Joe Rogan doesn't shy away from inviting controversial guests or discussing controversial subjects, and that has led to many debates and arguments with his guests over the past decade. So keep cool as we take a look at 10 times the Joe Rogan experience got heated. In one of the earlier podcasts, Rogan interviewed writer, radio host, and comedian Jamie Kilstein, and they talked about a very controversial rape joke comedian Daniel Tosh had made during a live show in 2012, which had sparked outrage in the media. During the podcast, the two discussed whether or not joking about rape was acceptable and how to deal with a topic like that. Kilstein then shared his opinions on rape, essentially claiming that being murdered was better than going through the hardships of being sexually assaulted, which caused Rogan to call him crazy for saying that he would rather have someone end his life than be raped and work through the trauma. Brian Collin, Joe Rogan, and Brendan Schaub have done a lot of shows together, so when Rogan and Schaub kind of ganged up on Callan during a podcast in which they watched fights in June 2015, things didn't get too serious. You fucking bully me. If I you know bully, you try bullying bullying me right bro, now, motherfucker. You know what your problem is? Hold on, let me Here's handle this. Here's your problem. Here's your problem. You've talked to too many guys that let you say shit like that. After Callan said that he had been bullied for around a year at one point in his life and wasn't taking any BS from anyone anymore, Rogan and Schaub mocked his tough guy facade and made it pretty clear that they were not buying it. As Brian continued to act tough, they simply replied by saying he had spent too much time with people who let him talk that way without poking fun of him, but made it pretty clear that they thought his threats towards any potential bullies were ridiculous. The transgender debate is a pretty delicate subject, so it didn't come as a surprise when things got a little more heated between Rogan and comedian, writer, and television host Adam Conover. While his guest argued that many trans people have been very consistent in stating their gender from an early age on, Rogan was horrified by the idea of starting hormone therapy on a young child whose mind is not fully formed yet. Uh, you know, have uh, do gender confirmation via uh, hormones. Um, and, and you know that that doesn't affect the suicide rate. The suicide rate for trans people is very high, post-op and pre-op. Conover pointed out that many trans people don't feel complete until they have had the gender confirmation, but Rogan replied that there were also many people with regrets, repeating his point that he was first and foremost very concerned about parents making this decision for their young kids and choosing to use something on their children that will radically affect the physical development of their body and is irreversible. In times of hashtag me too and political correctness, you really have to watch what you joke about these days, but during his time at the Joe Rogan Experience, Cuban-American stand-up comedian, actor, and podcast host Joey Diaz stated that he didn't really care about that. <laughs> I'm not taking it no more. I put on an album, and again, I'm very sorry if I offend somebody. I didn't name it this, he did. So take your fucking problem up with him. Explaining that he grew up using certain words that are pretty much unacceptable today, he said that he was trying his best to avoid offending anyone, but also said that it was simply too late for him to change his game. Diaz appeared to be so upset by the whole debate about controversial jokes and offensive language that he had to shout out his anger, much to the amusement of the host. We probably all agree that politicians are liars, but when Joe Rogan hosted comedian, actor, writer, and radio and podcast host Nick DiPaolo on the show, the two got into an argument about whether or not Trump was a bigger liar than Hillary Clinton, for example, while his guest felt like the mainstream media simply hated Trump and were exaggerating. Would you agree that as you get older, you become more, like, more conservative? No, I was always a bit of a dick. Rogan believed that the US president was indeed a bigger liar, and he accused DePaolo of using what he referred to as whataboutism, essentially trying to ignore the problem of Trump's lies by pointing towards other lying politicians. American conservative commentator and political activist Candace Selwyn's shocked Joe Rogan during her time on his show, when she stated that she didn't believe in climate change. When she admitted that she wasn't educated in the field, and this was simply her belief, Rogan replied that she shouldn't form an opinion and stated publicly then, until she would be more informed because global warming wasn't about believing or not believing. It's yeah, I don't, I don't believe this like at all, just so you know. You don't believe it like at all? <laughs> Owens didn't do herself a favor when she brought up the fact that she mostly felt like that because of how politicized the topic has become, because Rogan quickly pointed out that about 97% of scientists from all over the world who had done studies on behalf of all kinds of companies and organizations said it was real. 
Owen started talking about how she felt that America was losing money because the topic had become so politicized and she didn't feel like humans needed to do anything. Rogan was pretty shocked to hear that, being a strong believer of humans having a negative impact on the climate. However, he was even more angry about Owen simply saying that she didn't believe in global warming and repeatedly called her out for stating her uninformed opinion on the topic, saying that she should be more aware of the influence she, as a public person, has on people. In 2015, British political commentator, public speaker and writer Milo Yiannopoulos got into a pretty heated debate with Joe Rogan when they discussed topics like religion, myths and male circumcision on babies. The two kept talking at the same time and interrupting each other, but things got even more intense when Yiannopoulos pointed out that a lot of our behavior and the way we talk as well as what is acceptable in our society is based on Christianity. If you say you're Christian and you want to be on that team, to you gotta kinda you. say it. You can aspire to be better than you are. Um... Aspire to be better than you are doesn't mean you believe in Jewish zombies. Rogan was having none of that and simply called it BS, saying it was all cultural. However, the example from New Guinea that he brought up basically just confirmed his guest's argument since New Guinea natives are not Christian. The discussion continued for a while, with Rogan being unwilling to accept his guest's assertion that people in America and Europe live in a Christian culture, where values are based on Christianity. Five years ago in January 2014, Rogan interviewed Dr. Mark Gordon, the medical director of education at Access Medical Laboratory on his podcast, and right in the beginning of the interview they got onto the subject of a supplement called glutathione. Gordon mentioned an example of a guy taking the supplement after a night out when he was feeling dizzy and nauseous from alcohol. According to Gordon, the guy was clear as a bell just half an hour later and then went out partying the next day and couldn't get drunk. Glutathione. Yeah, glutathione. It helps your liver when you drink alcohol? Well, it helps you with just about anything that the liver is responsible for digesting or metabolizing. Rogan reacted with disbelief and then laughed, saying that he wished he was smarter and knew more about the topic so he could call Gordon out on his BS. But while Rogan felt like his guest was giving people false hope, he still thought it sounded like a smart thing to try. His reaction to Dr. Gordon's claim later caused Brian Dunning to reapproach Rogan for not calling his guest out on it. Yeah. He came on and he starts promoting his miracle supplement that you take and you can drink as much alcohol as you want and not get drunk. Well, he's talking about glutathione. Saying that even someone with no expertise in the area should know that this sounded too good to be true and that things are never that simple. During his interview on Rogan's podcast, Dunning said that claiming there was a supplement that prevents you from getting drunk is against all reasonably established science and potentially deadly advice. You should have known enough to call him out on your bullshit. I didn't know if, he was going to bring that up. If you're going to, when you say that there's a supplement that can prevent you from getting drunk, you're, I'm sorry, you are, you are against all reasonably established science. He was outraged that Rogan simply allowed his guest to make people believe that the supplement allows you to drink as much as you wish without any side effects when it's just not as simple as that. Dunning was of the opinion that with a following like he has, Rogan had a responsibility to call his guest out on BS like that, while Rogan denied that he had any obligations towards his listeners saying that he couldn't call someone out on something like that since he is simply not an expert and never claimed he was. In 2017, martial arts instructor and comedian Eddie Bravo and stand-up comedian, fellow podcast host and former professional MMA fighter Brendan Schaub came on Rogan's podcast and got deep into flat earth theory, one of the world's biggest conspiracy theories. Bravo just didn't want to believe that the pictures taken by a Japanese satellite showing around earth were real and kept saying that they looked fake to him. Rogan pointed out that they had been taken from 22,000 miles away and brought up a Japanese satellite that takes a picture every 10 minutes, asking why they would bother to put up fake, downloadable pictures in high resolution every 10 minutes. Bravo did admit that there was no photo of a flat Earth, but insisted that the ones showing Earth to be round looked fake, claiming that all space agencies were in on this global lie. Rogan and Schaub couldn't believe that Bravo was ignoring all scientific evidence pointing towards the Earth being round, with Schaub wondering what the gain of this alleged lie would be. The discussion got even more heated when they talked about whether or not the Earth was spinning, and Schaub brought up an experiment that allegedly proved that Earth is not spinning, but turned out to be absolutely impossible to recreate, which was pointing to the fact that Earth is indeed spinning. Bravo replied by saying that, just like him, Schaub had gotten his information on the internet, so it was no more reliable than his own information, but Rogan and Schaub just didn't seem to be able to take any of Bravo's points seriously and seemed a little bit shocked that he would make claims like that. 
Starting a discussion about marijuana with Joe Rogan is a pretty risky thing to do, and Steven Crowder had to learn that the hard way. The Canadian-American commentator, actor, comedian and host of Louder and Crowder, a late-night style comedic television show covering news, pop culture and politics on his own site, tried to talk about the potentially negative effects marijuana could have on you, but was quickly attacked by a very defensive Rogan, who eventually resorted to yelling and calling Crowder names. After all, things like Coachella wouldn't exist. If, is this your article? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's been an article on my site. Oh, wait I a minute. Mean, if you can want to get Courtney. high, you're, well, you're a moron? Yeah, I think you really, Courtney You really think that, you're yeah. a moron? The discussion about Pod kept getting sidetracked, with Rogan accusing Crowder of interrupting him, but essentially doing exactly the same. While Crowder felt like Rogan and his assistant Jamie were teaming up against him, with Jamie pulling up articles to support Rogan's points on the internet. And right. my caveat is right. that I'm a bully so, and that Jamie pulls up statistics that only benefit you, you, my you are. ideas. On that, on that argument, you are. You are. You are. How, am I, how is it a bully when two people are talking? Crowder eventually called Rogan a bully, as the host kept calling him names and trying to belittle him by calling him adorable and sweetie, with the host claiming he was just joking, and a very annoyed Crowder eventually spending so much time arguing with Rogan that he missed his flight. 